I'm Marty Stauffer. You know, if I were a wild animal, I'd be a river otter. Now, some of you would probably be a grizzly bear, big and powerful, or a bald eagle, beautiful and free. But as far as I'm concerned, a river otter is the one animal that really knows how to live. This fun-loving member of the weasel family finds a good time wherever it goes. It plays every chance it gets. It makes a game out of practically everything it does. It's a streamlined swimmer with a passion for downhill sliding, and it will climb up and slide down a riverbank for hours on end. But the otter has a serious side, too. It's a skilled hunter and a faithful parent. Both mother and father share in raising the young. So let's take a look at my favorite animal. We follow a family as their young grow up in these wild mountains of upstate New York for this animal portrait otters of the Adirondacks. <laughs> When we think of New York, most of us think of the city instead of the state. It's hard to imagine that it's only a few hours drive from Wall Street to wilderness. North and west of the state capital at Albany lie quiet towns and rustic villages, and the largest park of any kind in the continental United States. Three times larger than Yellowstone National Park, Adirondack State Park encompasses more than six million acres of lakes and streams, mountains and forests. This lush, diversified habitat is located within a day's drive of 55 million people. Yet it supports a great proportion of the wildlife to be found in our northeastern states. Within the park are 2,300 ponds and lakes and over 30,000 miles of brooks and rivers. The river otter is native to all of North America, but nowhere could this water-loving creature ask for a better home. In spring, the female otter finds a den along the riverbank where she raises a litter of from one to four young. Baby otters mature very slowly. It takes five to seven weeks before their eyes are even open. The mother otter is especially devoted to her offspring during these first two months of life. So devoted, in fact, that she will not allow the male otter anywhere near the den. But in order to provide rich milk for her babies, she must leave often to hunt for food. Unlike most mammals, the otter has webbed feet. Its tapered tail acts as a rudder for smooth, efficient motion.
This creature may not look very appealing, but the freshwater crayfish is one of the otter's favorite foods. When diving, the otter's ears and nose are shut tight. Its strong lungs and slow pulse rate enable it to stay submerged for several minutes at depths of 30 feet or more. Stiff whiskers act as feelers to compensate for weak eyesight underwater. The otter takes its meals on or near shore and catches many of them there too. An opportunistic carnivore, its diet includes fish, frogs, freshwater clams and mussels, insects, and even an occasional mouse, rabbit, or duck. During the four months that she nurses her pups, the female's appetite is insatiable. A month has passed. It's now early summer. The young otters are finally ready to begin exploring the world outside their den. At three months of age, they have finally shed their baby fur for the thick waterproof coats they'll need in order to begin swimming lessons. Yet they are not instinctively water babies. The mother otter coaxes and encourages them through every step. Drinking the water seems to be one way of getting used to it, or maybe of avoiding it. But for an otter, curiosity is an inborn trait. Now that the young otters are no longer confined to the den, the male otter senses that it's time for him to join his family. The female is watchful as the male greets his offspring and takes over as teacher. Though the young ones have never seen him before, they treat him like a long lost friend. Even the female barks her greeting. Encouraged by the example of this new adult and coaxed from in front as well as from behind, the youngsters finally take to the water. First, it's more dog paddle than ballet. This painted turtle is no slouch when it comes to swimming. At least he's slow and steady. But little does he know that he's about to be used as an underwater frisbee.
The only thing more insatiable than an otter's appetite for food is its appetite for play. It literally would rather play than eat, and a live toy is the most fun of all. Not knowing that no harm is meant, the turtle clams up. The river's current has its own sense of play. It will be a while before these youngsters seek out the rapids and waterfalls where their parents sometimes frolic. The young otters, overwhelmed by curiosity, forget for a few moments that they have never learned to dive or hold their breath. When they do remember, it's too late for panic. They already know how. There's nothing to do but go back for a bit of practice. Among the otter's neighbors is this beaver, a hard-working creature who seems unable to comprehend that the family that plays together stays together. As the otter family dries off by rolling in the grass and the father returns to the water to hunt, the beaver methodically goes about his business. Otters have often been known to tweak the tails of beavers while they're hard at work. Perhaps living well is the best revenge, but the question is, who's living well? Summertime in the protected Adirondacks Forest Preserve is a benevolent time for all, and everyone lives well. Each creature has its own way of life, and each way is special. Play has been defined as activity without purpose. Perhaps this is why the otter is one of the few truly playful animals. 
Otters live in family groups, not packs or herds, and problems are mainly solved by play, not by confrontation. So all this tumbling and wrestling serves only to prepare the pups for more play. For the young otters in their constant exploration, all the world's a playground, and every creature in it a potential toy. Some you get to play with, some you don't. A sense of adventure keeps the otter family on the move. They often roam 15 miles in a single day. They may follow a river upstream to its tributaries or downstream to a lake, feeding as they go. Like this mink, otters are members of the weasel family and sometimes compete with the mink for food. Territory is not a problem, since the otters seem content wherever they end up. The mink is somewhat of an aquanaut too, but far more business-like than its larger cousin. The otter's playfulness seems confusing to the mink. But the mink has already taken what it wanted and has little time to indulge in mere fun. Mutual grooming and the warm sunshine distribute skin oils through their double layer of thick fur. This evolutionary adaptation keeps the otters waterproof and probably also feels good. And feeling good is what the otter's whole life is about. If it isn't fun, an otter won't do it. Every aspect of daily activity is turned into a game. An otter will play with a stick, a shell, or a pebble for hours on end. But its all-time favorite activity is sliding. The red-tailed hawk seems to be attracted by a form of commotion it cannot comprehend. As one writer wrote about otters, the greater the extent of confusion they can create about them, 
the more contented they feel. This confusion may serve a purpose. It may disorient predators like the hawk. Otters have few natural enemies. Predators like foxes or birds of prey cannot follow them underwater. And water predators like snapping turtles can seldom catch an otter unaware. An otter in the wild will often live 15 years. In the Adirondacks, as elsewhere, one of the staple items in its diet is fish. For the most part, the fish taken are the more easily captured slow swimmers and bottom feeders. But otters are known to catch trout and other fast moving game fish by trapping them in the shallows. Even if the fish should manage to escape to deeper water, it will have a hard time out swimming an otter that can move at speeds of up to seven miles an hour. The greatest threat to both fish and otters in the Adirondacks and in many other parts of the country is almost invisible. It's acid rain. Hundreds of tons of sulfur dioxide and other chemicals pour from the smokestacks of eastern industries each year. These pollutants are carried by prevailing winds and fall over the Adirondacks watershed as acidic rain or snow. The result is that many once teeming lakes are now lifeless and sterile, totally devoid of aquatic life. No fish, reptiles, or amphibians, nothing on which an otter might feed. Game fish like trout and perch have the least resistance to acidified water and are the first to die. Bottom feeders like suckers and bullheads have greater tolerance, but fish are not the only creatures affected. In some lakes, nothing but the most acid tolerant algae survives, and in many areas, the entire food chain has been destroyed. Around 1900, otters disappeared from the Adirondacks due to unregulated hunting and trapping. Now, unregulated industrial and automotive pollution poses an even greater threat, and not only to the otter. 
the long-term economic cost of this problem will be much greater than the short-term price of forcing industry to clean up its act. Yet, little has been done. The otter, with its free-ranging mobility and adaptable eating habits, has a better chance of surviving than most. But unless we humans tackle the problem we've created, chances are the otter will have to work harder and harder to find something to eat and have less and less time to inspire us with its free-wheeling appetite for fun. Many creatures are rarer than river otters, but few are more endearing, and none will bring you greater pleasure. If you're lucky enough to come upon an otter, be prepared to spend a few hours. I bet you'll have as good a time as it does. Although otters are now being appreciated for their fun-loving outlook on life, they were once seen only as fur bearers to be trapped and sold. Man's over-trapping of the past and his pollution of the present have made life nearly impossible for these animals. Luckily, in addition to being playful, they're also adaptable. And that's the reason we can still delight in the otters of the Adirondacks. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.